There is nothing that I desire compares with you. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Lord, you are more costly than gold. Lord, you are more beautiful than diamond. There is nothing that I desire. mercies endure forever for the Lord is good his mercies forever let's appreciate him let's give that honor to him honor to the king honor to our savior honor to our king of kings and the lord of lords let's appreciate him let's honor him let's give that honor to the lord for the lord is good his word is true in our life. Somebody, wherever you are, as you are thanking him, as you are lifting our voice in service this morning, let's begin to appreciate God. Let's begin to honor God. This morning, the Lord is with us. Let's lift our voice in praise to him, in honor to him, nothing to compare with God. Let's appreciate him, give that honor to him. Give that praise to God Almighty. Appreciate him for the love of God. Appreciate him for the goodness of God. 
appreciate him for the love of him in your life. Somebody lift a voice in praise to him. I want you to lift a voice in honor this morning. He told us, enter his gate with thanksgiving, his court with praise. So somebody, as you're worshiping God, I want you to enter his gate with thanksgiving in your heart, his court with praise, for the Lord is good, for the Lord is kind. Lift your voice in honor to him. Lift your voice in adoration to God. Appreciate him. Thank him for what the Lord is doing. Thank him for what the Lord is doing in your life. Thank you for the Lord in this season. I want you to begin to appreciate you over God. Lord, you are good. You are not a man. Lord, you are kind. You are faithful. Somebody appreciate God. Somebody lift a voice in honor to God this morning. Thank him for this privilege of coming to him. Of knowing him, church, lift up a voice and thank him. Church, lift up a voice and bless him. Church, lift up a voice and appreciate him. In Jesus' name, we pray. I hope somebody you are saying amen wherever you are. I hope church you are saying amen. I want you to thank the Lord for this privilege of bringing you to his presence. Hallelujah. He said, no man, no Jesus, except the Father draws him. I want you to appreciate him because it he draws you to him. He opened your understanding and your knowledge to come to him. That's why you need to lift your voice and appreciate him. Say, Father, I thank you for drawing me to you, for bringing me this morning into your presence. For showing me that great love. Somebody thank him, bless him. Give that glory to him. Give that honor to him. Give that adoration to him. Give that love for him. Say, Father, I thank you, Lord, for showing me that love. For showing me that grace. For showing me that mercy. For showing me that kindness. I appreciate God. I appreciate you over God. I appreciate him. Give that honor to him. Blessed be the name of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. I want you to thank him. Let's thank him, church. Let's thank him over what God has given to us. The Bible told us no man receive anything except God, except being given from above. We cannot have anything except heaven gives to us. I want to appreciate you, appreciate God for what God has given to you. You are in a good health with your right mind. He surround you with children. He show you love. Let's appreciate him for what the Lord has given to us. Church, lift our voice and appreciate God for what God has given to us. He has to reveal his love for us. He has to reveal his kindness for us. Let's lift our voice and appreciate him. This morning, oh God, we thank you. Thank you, God, for, for Christ, America Ministry, Solution Center. Thank you, Lord, for every members. Thank you for every workers. Thank you for everyone. Father, we lift our voice in praise to you, in honor to your name. Thank you, righteous God. In Jesus' name, our Lord, we pray. Let us acknowledge ourselves before God. And begin to confess our sin. You see, all I've seen and fall short of God's glory. I've sinned against you. Lord, I've sinned against your word. Jehovah God, forgive me my sin. Come into my life and come and reign. Come into my heart and rule. Reign in my life, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Pray and ask the Lord, Daddy, let me find your favor today. Let your favor surround me as I lift my voice before you. Daddy, reveal yourself in your power to me. Reveal yourself in your glory to me. Let me see your hand. Let the blood of Jesus Christ cover me. Somebody pray in the name of Jesus. 
Somebody lift your voice. I hope you are praying. I hope you are lifting your voice. I hope you are praying. I hope you are lifting your voice in this presence this morning. I hope you are lifting your voice in his presence this morning. I hope you are lifting your voice in his presence this morning. I hope you are lifting your voice in his presence this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, let your blood wash away all my iniquity, all my trespasses, all my sin against your word. Now begin to ask the Spirit of God to fill our mish. Let's ask the Spirit of God to fill our mish. Open your heart and begin to pray that the Spirit of Jehovah God to fill our mish in the name of Jesus, to fill every life, to touch everyone. Pray that the Spirit of God to fill our mish. Somebody pray that prayer. Father, we pray for us this morning. Let every look unto you today, experience your power in the name of Jesus. Let everyone that call upon your name today, let the yoke be removed. Let the captive be free in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray, say, Daddy, let me see the hand of your power this morning. I want you to lift your voice and pray to God. The Lord God of heaven, we want to see the hand of God's power. Let's pray this morning now, I mean, so God. As a church, we want to experience the end of your power. As a church, we want to experience the end of your power. As a church, we want to experience the end of your power. Can we lift our voice and begin to pray? That as the church, we want to experience the end of God's power. As the church this morning, oh God, we want to experience the end of your power. As the church, oh God, we want to experience the end of your power. Somebody pray that prayer. That as a church, we want to experience the end of God's power. In every light that will look unto you, O oh God. In every children that look unto you, O oh God, this morning. Let us experience of the end of your power. Let the yoke be removed. Let the captive be free. Holy Spirit, perform your work. Holy Spirit, as the choir minister, as the word of God go forth, let it come in power. Let it come in glory. Let your presence fill our midst this morning. Let everyone that look unto you experience the touch of heaven. In the name of Jesus, let every yoke be removed. Let every bondage be lifted up, O God. In the name of Jesus, let your church experience your power. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's pray for the church that the gate of hell shall not prevail. He has prophesied over, over this, over his church, that the gate of hell shall not prevail. Let's say, Daddy, let's experience that victory. Open your heart and pray, pray to God. Say, Father, let us experience that victory. Makoto koparu satayaba. Limprendo shikatayaba. Father, let us experience your victory, O God, in the name of Jesus this morning. Let for Christ's medical ministry. Let for Christ's medical ministry experience of victory. Let your victory come forth for us this year. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our living God. In Jesus' name, our Lord, we pray. Let's pray. Let's pray for the church as we are trusting God for our own building. That God of heaven to make a way. In the name of Jesus. That Lord God of heaven, we need a place to worship you. Let's say, Lord, we need a place to call by your name. Listen to them, open your heart and pray. Let the church be blessed. Let the church be blessed. We cover. Thank you, my father. In Jesus' name, we prepare for all the children in the church and every family. And we secure everyone in the blood of Jesus. That no evil, no storm shall come our midst. Father, we seek your everyone in your blood and let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, we pray. Tell the Lord as you pray. Tell the Lord, as I seek your face, oh God, this morning, say, Lord, let me see you. You are here to see God. Tell the Lord, Lord, as I seek your face this morning, Lord, let me see you. Let me experience your power. 
Let your power touch your church, oh God. Let your church fill the atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Psalm 19, verse 1 say, The heaven declared the glory of God. The sea sky proclaimed the works of his hand. Day after day, they pour out the speech. Night after night, they reveal the knowledge. You see, there's no speech. They use no word. No sound is here from them. Yet the voice go out into the all the earth. Heaven declare the glory of God. As you are here this morning to declare the glory of God, I want every one of us to open our heart as we're going to receive for our Father. Jesus is there this morning to do great things in our life. And I pray your life will declare the glory of God. This morning, Sabi will declare the glory of God. The glory of God will manifest in our midst in the name of Jesus. Thank you, good God. Thank everlasting Father. In Jesus' name, our Lord will pray. I just want to welcome everyone in God's presence this morning. We welcome Jesus, our Lord, in our midst. As we open our heart, as we go in our worship, as we go in song, let our heart be open. And I pray that you, my God, will bless you. I celebrate everyone that is here. God bless you. God bless you, everyone. Enjoy the service this morning. God bless you. Bye-bye. just begin to thank the Lord that um, he has brought us into a new season that this is the first day of spring that let us just begin to thank him because um, that you know spring it signifies um, restoring growth let us just begin to thank him because he'll restore everything he'll um, bring new beginnings into our lives let us just begin to thank him because he has been so faithful, he has been so good. Let us just begin to glorify his holy name for what he has done and the things that he will do. We thank you, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, give you all the honor. Let your name be exalted for the new things that you have done. Oh, Yeah. 
worshiping the Lord. And this is not, I heard it come, I heard it clearly. Like I'm talking to everyone in this place. And the Lord said, some are here thinking about what they don't have. And what they're about to get, that they failed to worship me. And that song came to me. said, every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. taught me something. Sorry, I'm, I'm here to give an announcement. I'm not the preacher. I, I look into my dad's wardrobe. There are some things he bought for $1,000. He can't use them no more. Why do we chase after something that perishes? He alone is going on a journey alone. I'm not going with him. So when I was worshiping the Lord, the Lord was making me see reasons. People are still chasing the wind. At most, mommy, pastor, you get to live to be 120. <laughs> what happens after that? You know, it's not when we go to the funeral alone, alone that we get to, things get to resonate with us. We are just passing through. I, I love 120. That number jumps at me all the time. But I'm still going to, you know, so I look into the wardrobe, things you can't use again. That he paid top dollars for. I'm, I'm going to end up giving them away because I don't wear the same size as him. But I believe where he is, is rejoicing in the Lord. Because only what you do for Christ will last. Every other thing is secondary. Good morning, church. While we can still make it, let's make it count. Let, these things are not going with you. I know at some point I'm still going to get a Lamborghini. I don't know about you. I'm telling you what I'm still going to do. But guess what? Are they going to bury me in a Lamborghini? Food for thought. These things don't matter. Vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Let's chase what is eternal. I rep Christ everywhere I go. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because I know things we're chasing about, I, I'm, I'm already walking towards it. You know, kids, teenagers, let's think of our eternal home where there will be no moth or rust, doesn't decay. Let's welcome to, let's welcome Mommy Pastor into our midst. He just came back from the 234. If you know, you know it. 234. I was telling him this morning, I was telling her this morning, I said, thank God for Johnny Mercies. People step out from their home. They miss a step and they're dead. She travels thousands of miles and she's back safely. You know, I think we ought to be excited about that. Yeah, we, we, we ought to give it up to God. No, there are some things I don't take for granted personally. Sorry, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm diverting from what I have. I was once privy to attend an aviation school. So I know what it is to fly a plane. So when you talk about journey of miles, thousands of miles over the Atlantic Ocean, things we take for granted. Let's live a heart that thanks the Lord on a, on a daily basis. Many did not get to wake up this morning. Let's get out of bed. Welcome, Mommy Pastor. Happy Sunday, everyone. 
the youth are going to be converging in church on Thursday. The youth program, you know, we're going to start our night vigil. And it's going to be from nine. I, we ought to be excited about that. Yeah, we ought to be excited. You know, we ought to be very, very excited. We're going in a new direction completely. We're going in a new direction. So this Thursday, we are converging at the church from 9 to 11 for our vigil. Destinies are going to be birthed. So many things are going to come out from this. We ought to be very excited. Oh, Friday, he said Thursday. Yes, it's Thursday, 9 to 11. Our youth, please. I know the time you, you used to play your video game or whatever. You can join us. The youths are not the, the, you know, you're welcome. Let's come and join us. Let's see what we're going to do, what we're doing. Moving straight. Sunday school is from 10 to 11. Sunday worship service is from 11 to 1 p.m. Wednesday Bible studies at 7.30. Our monthly service is second Friday of the month is a prayer meeting and is at 7.30 p.m. Every last Sunday of the month is a Holy Communion service. Every last Friday is a night vigil. One Saturday of the month is a women's meeting. First Sunday of the month is a Thanksgiving Sunday. You know, this is my heart's desire. When we meet on Zoom for Bible study, and it's still not encouraging, it saddens my heart. I don't know about you. You are in the comfort of your home, except you are at work where phone use is not permitted. You can't even talk to the person beside you. I don't see why we shouldn't be getting like 30 or 40 people every Wednesday at the Bible study. We are not even in church. God will help us all. You know, this is my heart's desire that everyone in this auditorium meets heaven. Everyone in the new, everyone. <laughs> well, you are not sown towards your eternal home. I don't know. Cash App is FC Ministry at Yahoo.com. Our PayPal is FC Ministry at Yahoo.com. Our Zelle is FC Ministry at Yahoo.com. As we give unto the let's rise up as we give unto the Lord. As we do so, the Lord will bless you immensely in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you.
Nobody can behold him for you. You have to behold for yourself. He's not a second class Christian, but first class Christian, first hand. You have to behold him to be transformed. Father, this morning we ask that we behold your face in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your grace. We ask for your inspiration. We ask for your presence. We ask, Lord, from transmission. Lord, be it unto us according to our request in Jesus' name. Lord, you told Jeremiah, he said, what did you see? He said, I saw and hammer three. Says that I've seen well. Help us to see well this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. For in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we have our seats uh, in the presence of God? And once again, uh, we welcome our pastor into our midst. And we thank God for joining us in Jesus' name. And we pray also for our pastor who will meet us safely in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, we'll be speaking as God give us utterance. Um, but I just want us to look unto Jesus this morning for the few minutes we have. You know, he said, every one of them that appear in Zion before him, he said they have been transformed from glory to glory. And as I studied the scripture, you know, I was made to understand that even it is our own sensitivity of God's presence that will enable us, that will make the degree that will cause the degree of our beholding him. So it's how much we are conscious of his presence, how much we are alert of what he's going to do that will determine the degree of our beholding him. The Bible talks of Jeremiah, in Jeremiah chapter 1. He says, Jeremiah, what did you see? He said, I see, I saw. And before then, he said he was in the day of the Lord. He was praying. He was in the spirit. 
So I said, so at how much three? And God said, you have seen well. So that means it's how much he yielded himself, how much he was in tune in that atmosphere with God that enabled him to see well. So if he had not seen well, God would have said, you have seen wrongly. May the Lord help us to see well in Jesus' name. We will not see vaguely in the name of Jesus. This morning I'll be talking of what I uh, term understanding. Praise the Lord. Understanding. Understanding. When we look at Proverbs chapter 4 uh, from verse 7, which is a common um, scripture, Proverbs chapter 4 from verse 7. Uh, it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Hallelujah. Wisdom is the principal thing, and in all thy getting, get what? Understanding. In all thy getting, get understanding. And often and then, we talk about wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And what is understanding? Is it just to understand? So we know that understanding is very key in everything we do in life. Understanding makes us do what we do and act the way we act. It is the degree with which we understand something that we reflect in our action, in our attitude, in the way we do things. So understanding is very key. And when we're talking about understanding, we're not just talking about a cognitive understanding alone. But we're talking of understanding of life. And the word of God is life. So again, we're talking about understanding the word of God. Accurately knowing the plans and the purpose of God for our life. So understanding in life is very key. Understanding is very key. We need to understand. So understanding is the action. The way, the way I put it is, is you know, when you, are, when you were in school, you, every one of us did exams and tests. What was those exams and tests meant for? They were meant to test what? Your understanding. So you were taught in school, you have gone through from 100 level to 200 level. I don't know how maybe it's the same with you here. Or 500 level. You have taught everything, but at every time you are tested, they are testing your understanding of those things they taught you. They are testing the degree at which you understand what you have been taught. They are testing it every day. And it's two things that can happen. Either you pass or you fail. Praise the Lord. We will not fail in Jesus' name. We will not fail in life in the name of Jesus. And so also is life. It's the same application to life. Because everything that is spiritual, the physical world is just a reflect, uh, replica of the spiritual realm. So this realm is a sister realm to the spiritual realm. So whatever that happens here is has a prototype, is a prototype even here. Because the Bible made us to understand that the real world is actually in the spirit realm. So whatever that happens here is the effect that caused everything that happened. You, you think coronavirus just broke out? It was a spiritual effect that manifested physically. And the carnal people, the physical people, they will be the one to suffer the consequences. The, 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 the saying in Yoruba that says, 
the, the ground, the, where two elephants are fighting, that is the grass that there that suffers. And so it is, that is why the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God. Every time, every day, there is war every second, every minute, every hour in the spirit realm. Every, every second, if the Lord should open your eye to see what the Lord is delivering you from through the act of his mercy. Daniel, Daniel was praying, and he says the prince of Persia, you know, detained, he detained Gabriel. So, as, as he, he, like, like I was saying, as we pass the exam, so also, so there are two results. Either you pass or you fail. In the same vein is the understanding of life. And we are being tested too, every now and then. And the outcome of the test determines where we have to go. The outcome of the test determines what we are doing now. Proves our understanding. It proves our understanding. So understanding is very key in everything we do. Not just to understand for understanding's sake. So I, I, I always say that understanding is the action stage of the knowledge you have acquired over time. Or put into test your comprehensiveness of knowledge, of the knowledge you have acquired and now we tell the spirit that compels it, the compelling force behind it, which is now the wisdom. So understanding is key. And that also comes to everything we do. As a Christian, we need to understand the word of God in and out. You know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study, your, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed of rightly dividing the words of truth. So the interpretation that we give to the word of God will see the outcome in our life. Praise the Lord. We'll see the outcome in our lives. You know, not, not, not like somebody you know, interpreting, is, is, is it uh, Romans 19, 19, where uh, the Bible says that brethren to greet each other in church with a holy kiss. And, you know, maybe the understanding, and the understanding they got was holy kiss. Oh, holy kiss is holy kiss. So let's be kissing ourselves. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and be kissing and be smooching in the church. Hallelujah. And that is the understanding. So when we say understanding, the Bible says accurately dividing the words of truth. You know, there are so many, I th the Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. There are so many things out there, so many things. You know, like one time, I know many of us may see that, you know, the pastor bathing people in the church, naked. So that was a product that was the outcome of how he understood the word of God. So if we want to try with God, if we want to go deep in God, you've heard that message before. If we want to see God face to face, behold him, we have to come to a place of understanding. We have to come to a, a place of understanding. In fact, there are some things that God will not do for you. There are some testimonies that you will not get. There are some miracles that will never happen in your life until you come to the place of understanding. <clears throat> the Bible says, well, until we do what? We come to the place of understanding. There are some things that we never have. Understanding is very key in everything we do. He said, right, dividing the words of truth. 
the scriptures are the word of God. They are the spoken word. The, the scripture is what God has said. And that is why, you know, it is better to take time and sit down and spare and give everything that is needed to be done. And then, you know, take off the cost, take off in understanding instead of working in lack of understanding. So, like I said, and this understanding, we, we have, we can, there can be understanding can be positive and it can be negative, like we said. You know, when one negatively understands something, you know, and he acts that way, you know, Romans 19, 19, and so many other scriptures, and so many other things like that. But there is the accurate understanding of the word of God. And it's done by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. It's done by what? By the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. So, we see um, in James, uh, James chapter 1, verse 25. James chapter 1, verse 25. Here he was saying, he said, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in deed. He that looketh in the perfect law of liberty, be not a forgetful hearer. So attentiveness is one key to understanding. So to be attentive, not being a forgetful hearer, and being like the Berean Christians, that after they've heard the word, they go back home and sit with it and search the scriptures for themselves. Whether those things that were said were true. So, you know, we cannot overemphasize it. We cannot overemphasize understanding. God, God has a standard. And God will not do anything below his standard. God will not say, because this is a rebellious generation, then I have to do things differently from the way I've been doing it. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever now. Is that rebellious generation that needs to come to a place of understanding with God? That rebellious generation that needs to come to a place of understanding with God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. You see, there was uh, Paul. When Paul got to Ephesians church, he knew, he knew the, the gravity of what he was going to do there. He knew the importance of he knew what we, what we bring out his work. And the first prayer I prayed is this, that the eye of your understanding being what? Enlightened. The eye of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of his glory is. The riches of, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So there is a whole lot in this. You know, actually that is what the devil wanted. The strength of the devil is our ignorance. He does not have any power. That is the strength of the devil, is our own ignorance. And as long as that ignorance still in effect, the devil is a power. The devil is a power. 
So he tells us that the eye of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. So that means we have inheritance. You see, we have inheritance. There are some things that we don't even need to cry for. We don't need to beg for. There are some things that we don't need to go to the mountain for. It's just understanding who we are in Christ. Coming to that place of understanding. Knowing our inheritance and holding it. Knowing our inheritance and taking it. That we may know the hope of his calling. And what riches, the riches of his glory unto us. That is, we see, we know, I don't know maybe yet, but, but witchcraft. When a witch is exposed, what happens? His powers is gone. When, you know, and, and that, is, that is it. The devil thrived in secrecy. He thrived in secrecy. So we'll get there shortly. There are also, that is why understanding is likening to light. Understanding means light. And who is light? God is light. Jesus is light. And it says, as long as this light shines in darkness, darkness can never comprehend it. As long as I have this understanding of who I am, as long as I know what to do according to the scripture, I know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it by the word of the Lord, darkness cannot thrive. The darkness will all, because the, the, the weakness of darkness is light. No matter how old a darkness is, it can be 300 year old. A light, the appearance of a light in one minute does what? Diffuses it. And that is understanding. So then, when we assume, you know, we, we, we used to watch, I don't know, they, they say, uh, uh, those films, Otika, Ajeka, or something like that. <laughs> that meaning that he's been exposed. And once he's exposed, what happened? His power is gone. His strength is gone. And understanding brings us to that point of exposing. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will expose every darkness in our lives in Jesus' name. Can we just pray that one prayer? That Lord, every darkness in my life, let your light shine on it. In the name of Jesus. Oh, me shatana. Lord, every darkness in my life, Lord, shine your light. Abe sofena. Lord, shine your light. Hey, kabado sofiatana. Every darkness in my life, shine your light. The light shine in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Every, every darkness, in whatever form, in whatever shade, in whatever disguise, in whatever representation, whatsoever appearance, Lord, shine your light. In the name of Jesus Christ, in this church, every darkness, Lord, shine your light. In the name of Jesus Every high doubt of darkness, Lord, shine in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, shine your light in our home. Every high doubt of darkness. He said, and the light shine in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. In Jesus' name we are praying. It says lack, lack of understanding can also be equivalent to blindness. It can be equivalent to blindness. Lack of understanding. 
can be equivalent to black darkness. See Psalm 82. I just want us to see it. Psalm 82 verse 7. can start from verse uh, verse 5. Let's see from verse 5. Psalm 82, it says, they know not, neither, this is a common scripture, they know not, neither would they understand. You see, I want us to look at that very well. They know not, neither would they understand. They walk on in darkness. You see, all the foundation of the earth are out of course. Verse, he said, but I have said that ye are gods. We see. I have said ye are gods. I said it earlier, knowing who we are. He said, but, now see. And all ye are the children of the Most High. The verse 7 it says, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Why? Because they know not. And they refuse to know. Because they did not understand. And they refused to get understanding. I want to read from Amplified. I have ampli- I said this last week that Amplified helps to amplify. It makes loud. So we can see so many things. That, you know, more expanded. It says, the ruler do not know. Nor do they understand. They walk on in the darkness we see, is they walk on the darkness of complacent satisfaction. The darkness of complacent satisfaction. So if you have Amplified, you can go check it. The darkness of complacent satisfaction. It says all the foundations of the earth, the, fun, the fundamental principles of the administration of justice are shaking. He says, indeed, all ye are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you will die like men. Because you understand not. Because you know not. And they have refused to know. You see. And that is the works. That, that is the effect. You know. It said a blind, a blind person cannot see. Even though he's looking. You know there is a difference between seeing and looking. So a blind person cannot see. Even though he's looking. A lack of understanding can lead to weariness or can cause frustration. It can be time wasting. So lack of understanding can lead to what? Weariness. It can be frustrating. It can cause frustration in somebody's life. And it can be what? Time wasting. Let's take for instance now the examination. I was just laughing because, you know, sometimes this has happened to us as well. (laughs) It's cancel the series. And, you know, because they don't understand the question. And if we just sit down there, you know, know, maybe do something as well, cancel the series until the time is gone. (laughs) It's cancel the, okay, you don't know, cancel the series, you know, maybe in examination all. You know, for those of us that are not from Nigeria, I'm trying to explain. So in the examination hall, they brought the paper. He doesn't know the answer. You know, you know, instead of just be looking up, maybe the answer will come from above. Praise the Lord. <laughs> maybe the answer will come from above. Because he was not attentive in class, probably. Because he did not do is due diligence to know that topic. And the failure or the success is going to be on him, not on the teacher. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, I just want us to get so many things as they are coming. You know, sometimes, you know, like I said uh, last week, sometimes I can be sitting there and anybody, someone is preaching here, whether pastor or anybody, and you have gone. What I meant by gone is, you know, maybe from what I'm hearing, another message is downloading. So it's not necessarily what you are hearing. 
guys I said, may the Lord help us to see clearly this morning. May the Lord help us to see him. So you may be hearing something else, and you are downloading something else. Sometimes I can be sitting, and what I'm hearing, I'm downloading a full page of notes, a full page of instruction. So the success or the failure of that student is on that student, not on the teacher. The teacher has done his own part. And so is life. We all will sit. If we are, we are even sitting for it, we will sit for it. We will continue to sit for it. The examination of life. So, understanding who we are, understanding who we are will determine our success or failure. So, I said it can be, it can lead to weariness, it causes frustration, and it's time consuming. It's time consuming. It's time consuming. You know, when one does something several times, several times, and you keep getting the same result, you keep getting the same result, the person becomes frustrated. As a time is a unit of destiny. You know, what is considered in time is life. So when God said, uh, son, give me your heart, he's saying that God, give me your time. So time is life, life is time. Time is what else can quantify your time, your life? Your life is the only thing that can quantify your time. So because it's the measurement of your life, it's the unit of your destiny. So that is why time wasted can never be, be gained. Time wasted can never be regained. So we see in the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 30 uh, to 32, just Acts chapter 8, verse 30 to 32, we say Philip, that was Philip, he was teleported to the Ethiopian Enoch on the way between Jerusalem. The Bible says the Ethiopian Enoch has been reading that verse, that Isaiah, that he was bruised, he was crucified, he did not open his mouth, he went as a sheep, meant to be slaughtered, but he was not understanding. He was not what? Understanding. Until God sent Philip. And he said, do you understand what you are saying? How can I understand? If there is nobody to show me. Until understanding came, then he was saved. Do we see that? Until understanding came, then he was saved. Because before then he has been reading it. But until understanding came, that was when he was saved and he was baptized. And the Bible says he was baptized. Because he knew not, he did not understand, so there is no way that can happen. You see, he would have been there all day. He would have been there all day and eventually become frustrated. He would have been there all day. And, and it's happened to sometime, you know. Maybe if you, if, you, if you are even, when you don't have, when the inspiration is not coming, or sometimes you just carry, just look at a, 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 a scripture of the Bible, a verse of the Bible, and it's, there is, it's, not, it's not coming together. There is no coherence. In, in the first time, you just drop it. So that is why we see many of us read the Bible like a magazine or we read it like a novel and because there is no understanding we interpret it the way we want to interpret it. We interpret it according to our state of mind. The Bible was saying that it says flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. It said, but my father which is in heaven. So there are revelations that flesh and blood do reveal. But it's only the revelation from the spirits that are accurate. Amen. So I want us to now we see um, 
Second Corinthians chapter four, verse three to four. So the understanding, you know, is it, it, not just the devil knew it, and that's why he does everything. You know, somebody once said. The devil did not have problem with with us carrying the Bible, and that is true. The devil don't have problem with you coming to church. The devil don't have problem with you being involved in the activity in church. The devil don't have problem in you being a pastor or a bishop. He don't have problem in you. We we see we see all of them. We see. Um, okay. The devil don't have problem with you being anything. But the problem the devil has is understanding. He does not want you to understand the scripture. Because he knows once you understand the scripture, you have light. And once you have light, you dismantle him. Once you have light, you disarm him. You, 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 you disarm him. That's why we say God is light. Once you have light, we disarm darkness. Darkness can go nowhere. It will just be like a toy. Is it Kenneth? Um, yeah, I think Kenneth Agin was saying a story. He said he was studying. He was studying one night. And he just started hearing rat, something troubling somewhere. There was a rattling and all those things. And, and the Holy Spirit told him that that is the devil there. Okay, and he said, okay, and he continued reading his Bible. And he said, well, devil, when you are done, get out. Praise the Lord. He said, what? Devil, when you are done, get out. And he said, he, he, he went back reading, focus. He said, <laughs> he said, because you cannot distract my meditation in the word. You cannot take this time away from me. And he said, before in a few minutes, all those noise, everything went. He could not hear anything. The devil left because of what? Because he knew that he understand who he was. That he knew who he was. Understanding is very paramount. Understanding is very, very powerful. As long as one, keep walking in blindness. Uh, God, God cannot be compelled. There is a place where he wants us to be. And when we see everyone that have walked with God, God have always bring them to a place. He called Moses up to that place. He called all of them to the place. John in Revelation, he said, come up Peter to the place where you will now see more. We see Isaiah, he says, in the day of the Lord, I was in the spirit. So there is always a place to have an encounter with God. So we see in that, in, in that he says that the God of this world has blinded the mind of their understanding. That they will not understand the gospel of the good news. So that is one thing the devil fights most, is our knowing understanding accurately discerning the gift of truth. And Second Timothy 2.15 said that rightly divi divining the words of truth. So it is your due diligence. I said that for your due diligence to make yourself approve of God. Nobody is going to approve you of God. You will make yourself approved by God. So it is our due diligence to make ourselves approve of God. Because everything that is needed has been given. Just like the, just like, you know, Pastor always said it every now and then. He always said it rather every now and then. That, you know, he can only come and say what God has put in his mouth. Everybody will face life for themselves. Everybody will face God for himself. So it is your own due diligence, due diligence 
you know, we saw it now and then. Even, even when in class, you know, I kept using the example of the school because I see they are correlated. In class, a brilliant student, any exceptionally brilliant student that you see in class, ask him. He did not just stop where the class teacher stopped teaching him. He is a disciplined person. He has his own study time. He has an outsourced materials that makes him exceptionally brilliant than every other student in the class. And so is life. And so is the scripture. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Not me, but yourself approved. And you have to be approved of God. Make your approved unto God. It is your primary duty, your, your primary for and first duty to make yourself approved unto God. Not my duty here. Not the duty of the pastor. So ignorance, understanding can be, you just, okay, there was uh, an incident last week Sunday. I had, I had a flat tire. And I was trying to, Brasov was there. I was trying to bring out the spare tire. And how to bring out the spare tire was as easy as anything. But we were there for almost 20 minutes in the cold. Or 15 minutes. Trying to figure out how to bring out the tire. Because we don't know. And we were battling it. We were struggling until I finally went on YouTube. Thank God for YouTube. <laughs> until I finally went on YouTube and I typed it in. And I saw very easy, just tune it, tune it, tune it, and the tire came down. One minute, we brought out the tire. That is the power. As, as, as funny as it is, that is what happened in life. Understanding is very key. So we must grow up and do away with childishness and come to a place of understanding. Praise the Lord. We must do what? Do away with childishness and come to a place of understanding. Come. God is calling, come to a place of understanding. God is exalted on high. He's highly seated. You know, there are, as I said, accurately divining the words of truth. You know, the coming of God to us is, is the coming of love, not the coming of his principles. I believe we understand that. The coming of God to us, even though <laughs> it's the coming of love that he came down, you know, and we can be, that he came down to us because of love, but not bending his principle, not the coming of his principle. We have to go up. After I come down to us in love, grace carry us. We have to believe on that grace. And carry us to meet up to his principles, to his standard. And that's why we always call them, come up. Where does he met Moses? Which mountain he met Moses? Horeb. He saw the burning bush. But when he was to give the principles to Moses, when he was to give the commandment to him, what did he say? Come up to the mountain. So Moses had to climb up to the mountain. That climbing is not that physically. There are spiritual connotations to all those climbing. Break, brokenness. Because it, it is not just climbing like this. There is brokenness. There are so many things. Energy exhausted. He went up to the mountain to meet the Lord and was there with him for 40 days. And he got the commandment and came down. So we need to come to a place of understanding.
a place of understanding. We see that in Osea, let's see Osea 4 verse 6. That is the common verse, Osea chapter 4 verse 6. Say, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Osea chapter 4 verse 6. My people are do what? Destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject you. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We see. My people are destroyed because of knowledge, not because Satan is in the world. Is that what is there? My people are not destroyed because there is devil in the world. My people are not destroyed because Satan is in the world, but because of the lack of knowledge. He said they know not, neither would they understand. So ignorance is the strength of the devil again. Ignorance is the strength of the devil. May the Lord give us understanding in Jesus' name. So, to just round up, you know, the number one uh, cause of lack of understanding is unbelief. Praise the Lord. I just want us to know that for point six. The number one cause of lack of understanding is unbelief or lack of faith. Unbelief or lack of faith will not let you receive. And what you don't receive, you can't retain. What you did not retain, you cannot remember. And what you didn't remember, you don't understand. So, lack of faith, unbelief. The Bible says, he that wants to come to God, that wants to receive from him, must believe, first of all, that he is, and is the reward of them that diligently seek him. He that wants to receive from God. So, unbelief will not make you receive. And if you don't receive, there is nothing. What you, can, what you don't receive, you cannot retain. If you don't have anything now, there's nothing for you to retain. If there is no nothing, if there is no retention in your memory, what can you understand? So we see the process. And so many things causes this, you know, just like in the class too, you know, we see some students, maybe they hate the mass teacher or they don't like the mass teacher because he beats them a lot or because he's harsh on them. Or they hate the English teacher, and because of that, he failed the English exam. <laughs> that is wisdom. Because of that, they failed the English exam. <laughs> because they, 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 they don't. No, it happens now and then. So some people, some people are not good in math today because of their teacher. Some people are not good in English today or in any other subject today because of their teacher and they fail. So is God. He said, he that must come to God must believe that he is and is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So if you don't, if your unbelief will make you not to receive and your lack of perception will lead to nothing, will lead to unattainment. And if you cannot attain anything, if you cannot retain, there's nothing to retain, there's nothing to understand. And that's why many of us come to church, we already come with our mind fixed on what we want to do. No matter what the pastor says, we are fixed. We, have, we, we already have our own flesh and blood interpretation of the scripture. So even though if the preacher or the pastor is saying, this is what the Bible is saying, well, everybody is entitled to his opinion. So, but the Bible says, wisdom is justified of our children, of our products, of our fruit. 
So, unbelief, lack of faith, you know, causes lack of understanding. And number two, a hardened heart, you know, and that also can also be put under it. Hardened heart. We see Romans chapter 2, verse 5. Hardened heart. It says, but, I'm, I'll be reading, I'm reading Amplified. It says, but because of your callous stubbornness and your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of judgment. So a hardened heart can lead to lack of understanding. Like I said earlier, hardened heart, a fixed heart. God cannot shape you. God cannot remove you. You are already made. And the third is demonic manipulation. Demonic manipulation. And that we see in that uh, Second Corinthians. Can we open the Second Corinthians chapter four? Second Corinthians chapter four, verse four. Demonic manipulation. Demonic manipulation. Can you open Second Corinthians four four for us, sir? It says, in whom the God of this world had blinded the mind of, their, of them which believe not. And we have dealt with belief. Which believe not. Let the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. And we, already, we, we also uh, correlated lack of understanding with light. Let the light shine unto them. In whom the things of this world has blinded the mind of their understanding. Though blinded the mind of their understanding, demonic manipulation. And that, that, that is Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. He said, for we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. But against, you see, he said, for the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God, pulling down strongholds. Pulling down strongholds and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that is how the devil does his strongholds. So stronghold is not structure, it's not building, it's a mental idea. It's a, it's a belief system that is meant to ground one. Even though when every result is showing it, just like the examination, but there are strongholds. Don't you ask yourself, there are some people that I do have, I've, I've encountered some that are smoking, chain smoker today, and they are crying, they want to leave it but they cannot leave it. Do you think it's ordinary? There are strongholds, forces. They call them mind-bending spirits, manipulations. There are people that are masturbating. They want to leave it. They cannot. They cannot. Is it that do or die? They hate it. They cry when they are doing it but they are held stronghold. I pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord will break us from every stronghold in the name of Jesus. Every stronghold, every power that are bent to hold us down, the Lord will destroy it in the name of Jesus. The Lord will destroy it in the name of Jesus. So I said lack of faith, unbelief, hardened heart, and demonic manipulation. And demonic ma manipulation can come in any form. You know, even as little as the media. As little as the social media, watching things on the media, is an infiltration gradually. Fit filtering ideas, filtering policies, filtering so many things. You know, the devil is so creepy. 
it, it doesn't just come notice. It will not. And that is why it's the devil. That is why it's the darkness. Darkness thrive in secrecy. Darkness thrive in high doubt. So your understanding is your light that exposes him. In the name of Jesus. I want us to pray that Lord deliver me from every spiritual ignorance. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray that prayer. That Lord deliver me from every spiritual ignorance. Every spiritual ignorance. He said my people perish for lack of knowledge. He said they know not, neither will they understand. Every spiritual ignorance. Today, Lord deliver me in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual ignorance, Lord, deliver me in the name of Jesus. Every spiritual ignorance that the devil has been using to take advantage of me. Oh, Jesus, I made Shovena, Lord, deliver me. Eleikome no Shatana, Lord, deliver me in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver me. In Jesus' name, we are praying. We'll pray it again. We'll see, is it in that second king? Chapter 6, you know, the chariot that came to arrest Elijah, there were many, but the servant of Elijah was afraid. He says, hey, these people will kill us. And Elijah prayed. He said, Lord, can you open the eyes of this servant? And the Bible says, the Lord opened his eyes. And he saw that the company of angels that were with them was even more. The Lord opened my spiritual sight. In the name of Jesus. The Lord open my spiritual sight. Open my understanding. To know what I should know. To see what I should see. In the name of Jesus. Open my, it could be, it could be a passage of the scripture. It could be a light. The light will come through a scripture. Through a passage of the scripture. Through a verse. You will just see, the Lord will just open your eyes to it. And that will be a revelation for the rest of your life. The Lord open my eyes. Open my eyes in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, open my eyes in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I will pray this again, that Lord, that every stronghold, every stronghold, that wants to limit me to a perpetual state of ignorance. That stronghold, that every stronghold that wants to limit me to a continuous state of ignorance. So that, so that, so that are hiding, that Lord, I destroy them today. That I pull them down in the name of Jesus. That every stronghold that wants to limit me, to, to stagnate me to a perpetual state of ignorance. Don't want to let my understanding be open. That I destroy it in the name of Jesus. I destroy it in the name of Jesus. If you understand that prayer, I want us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. That every stronghold, every stronghold, every power, every mindset, every belief system, every ideology. Oh, Jesus. Abba Sofena, Lord, that wants to limit me. To a perpetual state of ignorance. Father, Lord, I pull them down. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pull them down. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pull them down. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pull them down. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pull them down. In the name of Jesus. Father, I pull them down. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pull them down. In the name of Jesus. Father, I put them down. Oh, speak from the heaven and the earth will hear. Break forth from within me and the earth will hear. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. Can we rise up? My heart is calling you, oh God. My heart 
He's calling Oh My altar He's calling Oh God My altar He's calling Oh Oh Let a fire from your altar Church my holy let a fire from altar touch me. In that same mood, that Lord, let your light shine on me. Let your light shine on me, Holy Ghost. Shine your light on me in the name of Jesus. The light of your knowledge. Help me never to walk in darkness again. Help me to walk in light. Even when you are walking, when the room is dark, you don't know where the seats are, where the shear has. You don't know if the table is tumble. You will just eat and collide with the shea. You will keep rising and falling because there is darkness in the room. The Lord help me to walk in light. Shine your light on my path. Give me your light. Let me never walk in darkness, Lord. Let me never walk in darkness, Lord. Shine your light on me in the name of Jesus. Shine your light on me in the name of Jesus, shine your light on me. In the name of Jesus. Let us continue in that prayer. Say that it shine your light upon me. Because light takes away darkness. Say that it shine your light upon me. A place where there is light, there is no darkness. Because it shine is light. Say that it shine your light upon every areas of my life. What light does is that it exposes every darkness. Open your mouth, say that it shine your light upon every areas of my life, that it shine your light. That it lets your light reflect over me. That it shine your light into every areas of my life, spiritually shine your light. Because when you have the light of God, you have the understanding. When you have the understanding, you know how to navigate life. Say that it shine your light, oh God, into every crooked ways. That it shine your light. That it shine your light upon me, oh God. When there is light, when they say there is falling, you say there is rising because you know who you believe and you know who you are. Say that it, Lord, give me, oh God, more understanding of you, oh God. Father, shine your light upon every area of our lives, oh God. Brethren, pray, say that it shine your light, oh God. Light reveals darkness, and where there is light, darkness cannot stand. Because you are a child of light, we are children of light. Say that it shine your light upon my ways, O oh God. Shine your light into everything that concerns me. Where there is light, there is no hiding place. When your life is full of light, the devil cannot hide. The enemies cannot hide. The work of darkness has no hiding place. Say that it shine your light. Upon every area of my life, when there is light, it reveals that even there is no way for darkness to stand. So that it makes me a child of light, that I carry light. Wherever I go, I be a reflection of light. Wherever I go, I carry light. Light illuminates. Light expresses. Light expresses love. Light is Christ, and we are children of God. So that it shine your light, O oh God. Shine your light over our lives, O oh God. Father, we worship you. We give you all the glory. Father, we give you all the adoration. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Let us jam those hands together for the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Powerful ministration, sir. Thank you. May the Lord increase your anointing. Greater heights in the name of Jesus. Praise, praise the Lord. Thank you all for holding forth for the ministers, you know, for uh, the workers, for the deacons, the elders in the house. Thank you for holding the fort. We really thank you. I pray that the Lord will reward you. It will, it will crown all your efforts with success in the name of Jesus. And you will not be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus. Every heart desire, even before you ask, before you ask shall be granted in the name of Jesus. I bring you all greetings. I bring you all greetings. You know, it's times when we go out. It's not, sometimes it's not all fun. I tell you that it's 
about the business of God. And we thank God for what God is doing. We'll continue to pray. As we all know that pastor is still there, continue to pray. Lift him up in your prayers for divine protection. That the Lord will use him mightily for auctions to speak in the mighty name of Jesus. That the reason for this, that the Lord will materialize it in the name of Jesus. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. We thank God for Johnny Mercies and it's always awesome time to be home. This is home. Place over there is home. So, you know, we thank God. Everybody's doing well. Grandpas, grandmas, they send their greetings. They said they are all doing great. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. But I just want to encourage you, you know, also to reach out to us, men that are not in church today. Reach out, brotherly love, sisterly love, just to check on them and see how they're doing so they know that you really care about them. Praise, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's been an awesome time in the presence of God. And I know that you are blessed. Are you blessed? I am blessed. Yes. Tell your neighbor, we are blessed. We are blessed. And I prophesy as you go this week that the Lord begin to open doors in the mighty name of Jesus. That every long time doors. I don't know if you have an interview this week. I pray that even before you step out, you will see the favor of God in the name of Jesus. The favor that surpasses human understanding. I pray, let it be yours in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, enter into your newness, the new season. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Shall we share the grace in unison? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest in our forevermore. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Shout seven hallelujahs to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You're blessed.